in our last video, we pretty much got our proof of contact perfected. We have our border on our circle and we are now going to apply it to the sprite in our game. So I do actually have our game running. As you can see, I've got the compilation server on the right hand side and the game building on the left hand side. And inside the browser, you can see we have our character with our old shader on him. So let's go ahead and change this up. Inside the part two folder, let's create a new file called outline shader .hx. And we are going to go into our test shader two. I've made a few changes to this file to make it similar to the way this kind of looks. So I've separated the code that works on the background. So that will be this stuff here. So if the opacity is zero, then leave the color as is. And if it's not zero, then change the color to be the green that we have. So what I'm gonna do now is copy this code, paste it inside here, and change this bit to outline shader. And now what I'm gonna do is go into the bit that we've made. So the shader we've made in GLSL, and just copy this if else here, and put it inside here. So get rid of all the stuff and put that here. Let's format this a tiny bit. Let's first of all change this Flixel Texture 2D into just Texture 2D. So the benefit of having a Flixel Texture 2D is that any changes we make to our sprite, so in that case our player, if we change the alpha or the color, that will carry over into, this Flixel, into the Flixel Texture 2D. But because we haven't made any changes, a regular Texture 2D will just be fine. Now let's change the circle shape to have texture 2D. Let's change the circle width to have bitmap. And now let's change this pixel called here to have the open FL texture called V on all accounts. Now we need to have, of course, our border width. So let's copy that and paste it inside here. Let's give it a border width of 0 0.002, make it a bit smaller. And we then have to make a few adjustments here. Because we're affecting the bit that's outside the sprite, we need to make sure that if this tech, this coordinate doesn't equal zero, then show it. So what we're doing here is getting the texture to the alpha. Let's, let's add a dot a to each one of these things. And we're saying to the alpha, if you have something that isn't zero, then show the color. Let's change this now to say a color, which is the same as what it currently is. And we'll do the same thing here because we don't want to have our green. Let's save this and let's change the player here to the to use the outline shader instead. And once that's done, as you can see, our character has this outline around him. Now, you'll notice that there are a few artifacts when the player runs, and let me zoom in so you can get a closer look at that. So when the player runs, there's some odd pink lines around the player. And the reason that this happens is because if you look at the player's sprite, in some cases, more than running, the images are quite close together. And I think the way it works in Flixel is it kind of adds the shader to images that are close by to what you're working with. So it's adding the shader to frames that are close by to the frames we're actually working with. So one way of fixing that in your game is to make sure there's more of a padding around each frame so that that overlap doesn't happen. But for this case, I'm gonna leave it as is. So as you can see, our character has a almost perfect outline shader. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.